Good morning YouTubers. Today I'm in the heart of Idol in Bradford and I'm here to document a German bomber that crash landed in Jasper Street off High Street and it actually landed in a timber yard number one Jasper Street and the impact was so heavy that it destroyed some cottages off High Street which is just down here and those cottages are from number 9 to 15 High Street unfortunately of such impact four people died now this video will be shot over the course of a few days we shall go to the graves of the victims or we'll try to find the burial plots of the victims have a quick look at the crash site obviously we've got to show a bit of respect because it's a private house and uh, we've got to respect the privacy and we'll do our best to find some parts of the plane itself and we'll talk a bit about the plane the plane was about 12 tons and you can imagine uh, the impact it had so this is actually Jasper Street where the uh, aeroplane crash landed a German bomber and there used to be a, a timber yard called JW Barker now I believe uh, it still exists or maybe some parts of it still exist because we were talking to some residents around here so we'll have a look at that later on and we'll just go around here we'll have a look so this is Jasper Street and just just behind there we'll go back we'll go to the actual cottages that were affected now I'll quickly show you the the cottages that were affected they're they're obviously been demolished and it's just a space between a, a few properties now you can see number 17 and in the spare patch of land there's some construction construction work going on and I want to quickly show you this area because it's private and um, yeah, quickly show you this area before it gets uh, developed over. And rumour has it that the uh, one of the engines of the aeroplane is under the foundation. So here we go. This is it, just behind the fence. There we have it. Okay, we're at, um, at One Jasper Street, um, and now this is where the uh, the bomber landed. Um, and you can see there's a wood yard there. Or what used to be a wood yard is a building where the wood yard was, and this is this has replaced it. Now, that original building was demolished when the when the bomber landed. Um, now here's the here's a picture of the bomber. You can quite see it's substantial. It weighed about 12 tons uh, and it landed on this wood yard and, um, and it demolished several houses in the process so um, I, shall, I shall take you down there as far as I can go uh, now whilst I'm here you can see the gable end of one of the houses which I'll get to shortly uh, now that house uh, at the side of it has been rebuilt it looks like a gable end but it's not the original gable end so you can see this is just quite it does go down quite deep so uh, take a step down here So 
it's not a small area that uh, that the German bomber took out. It's quite a large area. Uh, and apparently the building was was flattened. Um, and um, so here we are. I'm sort of at ground level here. And I pan up and get a bit further forward. And just by the side, okay, you can see there's a there's a wooden fence fence and just beyond that wooden fence there's a building going up now where that building was there were cottages there demolished by uh, by the German bomber crash uh, now if we look to our left you can see what looks like a gable end that I was talking about earlier now that's not a gable end as mentioned that's actually been rebuilt many years ago when the cottages, uh, several of them, uh, were destroyed by the by the crash. No. I wonder if this tree was here in those days, probably not, but it's a nice tree, or it may have been there. And um, to be honest, I find it fascinating that this is the site of, uh, of the crash of the, of the German bomber all those years ago. So that's the gable end, which is a, which you can see a bit better, and the other cottages that remained after the crash are here. So thanks for MTRs for a little tour across that is a bit rugged. But uh, our next stop is to find a piece of the aeroplane itself. Then obviously, like we always do, we'll go and visit the, or some of the graves of the victims, which are obviously the key element to the story. Because we often look at the story, but not the victims. Mm -hmm. They're normal human beings like us. They've got aspirations. They're somebody's kids, sons and daughters. So it's important to visit their graves. Mm -hmm. I used to know there might be still parts in there of the plane. It's not possible, is it? Because it is quite, it is dug down quite deep, so um, it must have been one big disaster yeah. for it to take out so many yeah. houses at a woodyard. So I'm here with Martin Baines, the director of uh, the Police Museum in Bradford. And Martin, what do we have today? Well, we've got a very important part of the collection here. We have the remains of a German bomber uh, that was shot down in Bradford, over Bradford during the Second World War in 1941. It was shot down by a night fighter and unfortunately, very tragically, it crashed at Idle in Bradford. A very sad incident. And uh, the air crew uh, bailed out of the aircraft uh, and they were brought down here. It was a, the police actually dealt with the incident, which is why we have these things in the collection today. And uh, interestingly, uh, Sergeant Richards, in, uh, a police sergeant during the war, arrested the pilot and uh, took him to Idle Police Box, uh, which is no longer there, of course, uh, but he was put in the police box. We have a picture of the police box in the museum. And uh, his son was one of my inspectors when I was in the police, Inspector Malcolm Richards, uh, who was his son. They were family of police officers, and his father 
a sergeant during the Second World War uh, captured uh, and arrested uh, the pilot of the plane and brought him down here. And all the crew were brought into the cells. And, you know, uh, can I ask you as well, the cells, yes. did it, the cells, did they still exist? Where the pilots were? The yes, yes, it's the cells that are part of the museum tour. Okay. So if people come down to the museum, if you come down to the museum on a tour, you can have a look at the footage. We've got a display about the incident. And you can go into the actual cells where these people were brought into as part of the museum tour before they went to a prison or war camp. Okay, Martin, as well, uh, I noticed these, uh, there are several pieces here. Can you explain what these pieces of the, of the aircraft are? Yes, yeah, so there's a piece of the airframe, uh, the largest piece. There's a piece of uh, uh, other bits of uh, wreckage. There's a piece of glass from the aeroplane, a spent round, and what appears to be um, an ammunition case uh, okay. as well. And is there any reason why, why, the, why the museum has it? Well, and we have, it's always been in the collection. Okay. Uh, it was in the Bradford City Police collection in the 1970s and 80s. And it will have been something that will have been uh, stored by the old Bradford City Police right from the time of the Second World War. Oh. And it's ended up in the museum because we've got that collection here. So was it part of, a, of an investigation of the Yes, of the yes, because it will have been investigated. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a major incident. If, if, an, air, if an aircraft, uh, crashes now, it's a major incident and it's dealt with as such and it will have been during the war. We're in Idle Library and um, here we have uh, an important artefact, a piece of history that's kept here. This this side documents uh, part of the uh, German bomber crashing. Uh, you can see it's, it's documented on here. Now the other side, and you can see an amazing artefact which is from the crash site of the German bomber. Now, there's a chap called Arthur Taylor. He was a local ARP. He was amongst the first on the site. He found this uh, and he put it in his pocket and we can see it today displayed in this, uh, in this frame. Um, it, um, it's, uh, it's supposed to be a gold service medal award, uh, awarded for, uh, for 40 years of service. We don't know to which member of the crew it belongs to um, and it's just it's just stunning to see it, and uh, if you can get closer up, Riaz, to it, you can see uh, it's got the German SS sign on it. Um, not many people know it's here, um, and what a fascinating piece of history that I'm holding in my hand. We've arrived at the Holy Trinity Church, which is two minutes away from the site of the, of the crash. Uh, now we're at the graveside of two of the victims of the crash. One is called John. Arthur Boyd, he died June the 10th, 1941, which was six weeks after the incident, okay, and also his wife who died on the day of the incident, which was the 5th of, of May, 1941. They were both 27 years old. Um, they also had a child who was aged 20 uh, months old, and um, the child's name was Garth, and, um, and the child had survived the uh, the crash because the cot had become overturned and the cot acted as a shield um and um it's a again it's a it's another sad tale that you know that these are being forgotten about um and i hope that people do remember you know the victims of this disaster and you know come here to you know pay their respects yeah like i said earlier on um we, we tend to focus on the the disaster itself but we forget about the the key the key points really the victims themselves and it's interesting how it says killed by enemy action right we've just arrived at the bowling cemetery and we're going to locate the victim who's unmarked and his name is Herbert Jowett and died on that uh, disastrous day so to speak and uh, in the hours, I think you've looked on the burial records, it's unmarked. Yeah, it's pretty breezy, so. Yeah, so we're looking at a Q7948 is where Herbert's grave is. Right. Um, so, you can see the burial number on a. Uh, what number on a, on a headstone? Oh, that's got wrong, isn't it? Around here. That's it. <coughs> so this one says. 
Q786. Q786. Six. And that's the corner there, so let's have a look. Seven. So 786 is there. Right. Okay, which is this grave. And Herbert's grave is here, which is right. so one down and one across. So one down and one across. So this is Herbert's grave here. Which one? This bank. Just here. Right here, that's here. Right, this is the plot. So. That's actually a good find because uh, wherever I've read it says unmarked and there's no location whatsoever. So, well done. Uh, have you got the burial records there? Yeah, I've got the burial records here. But it says um, 1941. And 5th of May, died oh, here. Sorry about that. On the same day. Yeah, 5th of May. Yeah. So, it's not all that clear, obviously. Yeah. It's been printed on it. This so. is May there, and as we go down, it says 5th. Yeah. Herbert Jowett, male, 61 years, is a quarryman. 15 High Street, Idle. Uh, it was taken to St. Louis Hospital, died there. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. That's great. So this is the... Um, this is what, and uh, again, it's just... Yeah, it's very sad that uh, he's been forgotten about. Nobody's been to his grave for maybe decades. <laughs>